Well, hi everyone, it's Mr. Wasman, and today we are going to be solving some problems that could either be area or perimeter in a home links activity called area and perimeter. Now, so often when I am working with students and I give them a perimeter problem, sometimes they will give me the area and then vice versa. They'll, they'll solve for area when I ask for the perimeter. So it is important for us to be paying attention particularly to what we're being asked to do. Okay, so let's take a look at problem number one. It says, the Murphy family bought two rectangular dog beds for their pets. Fluffy's bed was three feet by one and nine twelve feet. Pete's bed was four feet by two and four twelve feet. How much more area does Pete's bed have than Fluffy's? Okay. So, of course, when I'm dealing with a story problem, I want to utilize the strategy of ruckus, which is, again, I'm going to reread the problem, underline the question, circle the important information, come up with an action plan, and then solve it. Okay? So, there are two rectangular dog beds. Fluffy's bed is three feet by one and nine twelfths. Pete's bed is four feet by two and four twelfths. Okay? How much more area does Pete have than Fluffy? So we are comparing areas. So that means we have three things to do. We have to find the area for Fluffy's bed, find the area for Pete's bed, and then subtract the difference. Now, as you recall, the formula for area is simply length times width. And here's where it gets interesting. We've got some mixed numbers involved. So, for example, Fluffy's bed is taking three feet times one and nine twelfths. So I want to take that number and use uh, a multi-digit multiplication strategy because one and nine twelfths has two place values, a whole number value and a fractional value. So let's try partitioning rectangles with this. One times three, of course, is three. And when I'm multiplying a fraction, the only thing I need to look at is the numerator. So I'm multiplying nine times three and that's going to give me 27, 27 twelfths. So if I add those two partial products together, I'm going to get an awkward number of 3 and 27 twelfths. Now that can't stand. So I have to take 27 twelfths and see how many groups of 12 I can get out of it. So I'm going to divide 27 by 2. Not 2, 12. You know what I'm saying. Now, 12 times 1 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. 12 times 3, that's 36. That's too big. So the best I can do is two groups of 12, because 2 times 12 is 24. And that leaves me a remainder of 3. 3 twelfths. So now I've got 3 and a mixed number of 2 and 3 twelfths. And when I combine that together, I get a total of 5 and 3 twelfths. So, Fluffy's bed equals 5 and 3 twelfths feet squared. So now I need to figure out the area of Pete's bed. Pete's bed is 4 feet by 2 and 4 twelfths feet. 2 and 4 twelfths times 4. This time I'm going to use partial products. So I'm going to multiply 2 times 4 and 4 twelfths times 4. 2 times 4 is 8, of course. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 twelfths. Add those two together and I get a weirdo number. But I can easily fix that by taking 8 and 16 twelfths Take the improper fraction, 
create a division problem, come up with a mixed number of 1 and 4 twelfths, 1 and 4 twelfths, plus 8, which is going to give me a total of 9 and 4 twelfths. So Pete's bed is 9 and 4 twelfths feet squared. Wow, they really don't leave you a lot of room for scratch work. Look at all the scratch work I've thrown in so far. So now what do I have to do? I have to subtract because when it says how much more I'm comparing and subtraction is comparing. Okay, so I'm comparing 9 and 4 twelfths minus 5 and 3 twelfths. And again, I'm subtracting multi-digit or multiple place value numbers. 4 twelfths minus 3 twelfths is going to give me 1 twelfth. And 9 minus 5 is 4. So the difference in square feet is 4 and a twelfth. Okay? Now, fi the final part of this problem, they're asking you for the perimeter of Pete's bed. Now, perimeter is a different formula. Again, we're doing both kinds. Perimeter equals the outside measurement of the line segments that make up the rectangle. Length plus length plus width plus width. Okay, so I know that the length of Pete's bed is 4, and the width is... Two and four twelfths. So I'm going to find the perimeter by adding four plus four plus two and four twelfths plus two and four twelfths. And again, when I add numbers together, specifically multi place value numbers, I want to line them up. Okay, four plus four plus two and four twelfths. Or no. Yep, 2 and 4 twelfths, and 2 and 4 twelfths. 4 plus 4 is going to give me 8, 8 twelfths. 4 plus 4 is 8, plus 2 more is 10. It's going to give me a total of 12 and 8 twelfths as my perimeter. Lots of scratch work, lots of uh, things to do to solve these problems. But you know what, friends? That's pretty much how real-life math works. You're going to be doing lots of different kinds of operations, juggling different figures, uh, taking multiple steps to come up with the answer you're looking for. And that's okay. Each individual step that you took to solve all of this uh, was easy because you've had experience with it. Okay. We're just now applying those different layers of different types of math problems to solve uh, a number story. Okay, I'm going to leave problems 2, 3, and 4 for you to wrestle with. Okay, So let's take a look down at the bottom. We're doing some subtraction of some fractions. And of course, just like when we're multiplying fractions and whole numbers, the only thing I need to really be looking at are the numerators. So when I subtract 5, 6, minus 1, 6, of course, it's going to give me a difference of 4, 6, because 5 minus 1 is 4. Okay? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right. Maybe it's not so easy peasy. Or maybe there's no lemon squeezy involved in your math right now. And you're looking at this, and you're thinking, this is hard. If that's how you feel, then you need to talk to somebody about it. Talk to your math teacher. I always tell you at the end of my videos to talk to your math teacher. You know who else you can talk to? Your parents. Because chances are they've probably been through fourth grade before you have. So they've probably had experience with these types of problems too. Or have had to apply these real world situations and use math to solve them. Okay? Or maybe you could talk to a classmate who's already completed this problem and they can walk you through the steps. 
especially if you're kind of, you know, a little embarrassed, you don't want to ask or draw attention to yourself by talking to your teacher, you know, talk to your neighbor if it's permissible by your math teacher, okay? Just talk to someone. Don't suffer in silence. Ask questions. There are no stupid questions. I hope that this video was helpful, even though it's a hot mess of uh, scratch work all over the place. It ain't pretty, but it got the job done. Until we talk again, friends, have a good day. Thanks.